Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing my DFM Valorant rebuild. Uh, sorry for the delay this week. I've been kind of busy both with just life stuff and then also I've just been playing Premiere uh, and getting ready for playoffs, which I just played and we won. Uh, I'm going to be doing a video breaking it down on my other channel. Link will be in the description. I think it's called Wilkin Guides or something like that. I just make like Premiere Guides and stuff on there when I have free time. Uh, just for fun so you can go check that out whenever that goes up i don't know when it will um i don't know if these videos will have a certain schedule to them anymore throughout the rest of the off season it's kind of going to be intermittent uh, depending on what time i have or whatever so uh, just keep an eye out for that it won't be that tuesday saturday schedule that uh, most of these videos have been throughout the course of the series uh, yeah if you guys enjoy make sure you go leave a like and subscribe go subscribe to that second channel that i have link is in the description also go follow my twitch which i might actually stream that on first and then upload as a youtube video after um uh, link is in the description there as well as go follow me on twitter where i will be tweeting updates about the series when i go live and just reactions to general roster news and stuff like that um i use twitter a lot so again go check that out and yeah let's get right into it so before we get into what this team is going to be doing in 2025, we have to talk about what they did in 2024, where they added this crazy raccoon core in the offseason with like May, Neth, uh, a bunch of other guys, Anthem and Medusa, I think as well, were both on that team. And then they added in Cease as well. I think they got rid of JoJo, which was an interesting decision that I'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, they went 0-2 at kickoff, lost both games. Wasn't really that close, but I think they showed a little bit more signs of life than they had in all of 2023 then in stage one they actually won a game uh their first in franchising uh, and then in stage two they went one and four as well only beating their fellow japanese rival in zeta um not a great year but i think you come into 2025 having a lot more hope for dfm than you did going into 2023 or going into 2024 because i mean they had just gone win this the year before so i think it is definitely a step up uh, and i think the goal for this new roster uh, is to continue building around May and may be uh, get into a second, like get in a second or third, like good player on this roster to build for 2026. This roster really isn't built for winning next year. Uh, like the, the amount of games they win doesn't matter. It's how the players look in those games. That's all that matters. Whether may is playing well, whether, a couple of these other guys are playing well, and I think if they can find more pieces, then they can build for a great roster in 2026 and maybe contend to make some of these international events, which would be a very big step up for this rock for this org. So we gotta talk about the players that we'll be removing now. We got Anthem, Neth, and Seas. I don't think any surprises here. Maybe that Medusa isn't on this list, uh, but I do think he played fairly well last year, and we'll talk about him in a little bit more depth later as well as some of these guys right now so i don't really want to spend a ton of time on neth and cease because i think they were just straight up bad last year uh just two players that had no expectations coming to 2024 no hype around them at all they played very poorly about two of those expectations uh with a few games where they played like okay especially cease i think he was like fine in a couple games but not like not any great games or anything that would maybe think, oh, well, maybe this player has some upside that they haven't reached or anything like that. And yeah, I just, I don't want to spend a ton of time on them because these are not surprising removals. Then we have Anthem, who I think had some nice moments in 2024 and games where he played pretty well, both as a caller and as an individual. But I just wanted to look into better options for next year. Just, he still wasn't great. Uh, despite showing just some nice rounds, mainly, of calling and individual skill. I think if a Tier 2 team picked him up, I think he would be a pretty good Tier 2 YGL. Uh, as for Tier 1, it's kind of iffy, uh, especially with only two slots in Japan. You kind of want to get a little bit better here. So now onto what we'll need for this team. We need a Smokes player, we'll need a Flex player, we'll need an Initiator, and an IGL. Uh, Three new players coming into this roster, and we'll talk about the four roles that are available here. We got two IGLs from Japan that I think are kind of franchise caliber. You have Jojo and Messiah. Uh, I think two flex players in their own right. Uh, for flex players, you got Akame and Thiefy. Uh, Akame, who I believe got picked up by this team in real life and has been playing very well in their offseason tournaments. 
for controllers. I typed Gatorade instead of Gatorada, I think is how you say it. Um, so yeah, imagine the E at the end of Gatorade is an A, and then we'll be fine. And Suyata, who has played controller in the past, for, or for initiators, you have Nobita and Tanbo. So we'll start with the IGL that I'll be picking up, Jojo. I think pretty unsurprising here that he'll be the pick over Messiah, who I think is okay, but not not to Jojo's caliber. I think he's been one of the best IGLs in Japan over the last three years. Kind of like right there with whoever was IGLing for Zeta at any point. Um, he's supposed to be picked up by DFM last year, I believe. Like he was, it was kind of like rumored or whatever. Maybe not rumored, but actually like, like he got signed and then they just didn't play with him for whatever reason. Um, I don't remember exactly what happened or why, but I don't know. And I just think overall, just as an individual and an IGL, he gives this team a solid floor that he will elevate these players to at least some kind of level um, and make this team look like a top eight. No, maybe not a top eight, like top nine team Pacific, just strictly by being a very solid IGL and better than some of these bottom guys in Pacific. Then we have Tanbo, who I found randomly just watching like Japanese Red Bull home ground qualifiers last year, which was weird. And I thought he was in those games incredible. Um, I don't think he's quite lived up to that standard, mainly because I think he's a really, really, really good fade player. Maybe like a player kind of like Xiao. Um, and he's been playing more Sova and other stuff like that. Like, I think he's played some... Actually, I don't remember what he's played. What has Tonbo been playing? I haven't watched him in a while. Uh, I made these rosters very long ago. Uh, Tonbo, just mainly Sova. Sova Fade. Uh, he's played some Cypher in there. Some different, like, Sentinel stuff. Uh, for teams just to kind of, like, fill in. Just be flexible. Like... I think overall he's been a very solid player been like a consistent player that has like, I don't know, just been solid. Like, I don't think he's been like incredible by any means. He's won some nice clutches. He has good mechanics, good utility. Like he's not bad by any means. And I think he is probably the best initiator option here behind XDLL who went to Zeta division in my last video. Go check that out if you guys are interested in that. Um, and I think just a player with that kind of floor is very good for a team, but also like seeing that he can reach those high heights, maybe thinks, maybe makes you think that he can get back to that, especially maybe, I don't think she will, but like if fade comes fully back into the meta, like the, the main initiator that you're playing kind of like in 2022, maybe he could be one of, I mean, I'd even say one of the best initiators in Pacific period. So I'm very high on Tonbo, but I'm not like fully, oh, he's going to dominate or anything in tier one. I just think he'll be a very solid player and the best option out of these Japanese players. Then our last pickup here is Suyata, who was picked up by Zeta in real life, I believe. Uh, he was duelist player in 2024, played Smokes in 2023. Very, very mechanically talented player. Uh, maybe not the best fundamental player. Uh, especially on the duelist i thought his aim was like i mean his aim wasn't bad it was just kind of like shaky and like he would do some weird stuff get caught off guard sometimes a lot uh, sometimes a lot but like a decent amount and i think he's been better at that when he's been playing sentinel uh for zeta in their offseason matches so i think he could kind of play very well in a smokes role you'd want it to be more centered towards like extra stuff because i believe that's what he was playing the most of in 2023 uh, that could be completely wrong but i think he could be very good at any of the smokes agents other than brim i haven't like through even looking through his vlr games i haven't really seen him play too much brim uh so that could be a little bit of a concern with him but i think he i think he should be okay I, honestly tonbo could probably play the brim and he'd be fine um so our final roster here will be May as our duelist. No surprise there. He is amazing. Uh, honestly, a top five duelist in Pacific already, uh, which is very, very good for him. Uh, Jojo is our flex slash IGL. Already talked about that. Tombo is our initiator. Already talked about that. Suyata is our controller. And then Medusa is our sentinel, who 
I think most people would say, oh, just scrap the whole roster except for May and just restart. But other than Suyata, I don't think there's any really great controller options uh, within Japan. So I think keeping Suyata on controller and then Medusa playing Sentinel, I also don't think there's another good Sentinel player. Um, other than Jinbong, but I'll tell you, he's going to another team. So um, yeah, I just ended up going with this roster here, which honestly, I think could compete in Pacific. Maybe not for an international spot or anything like that, but like to play in the playoffs or whatever, I think they could be a team that could compete with that. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Go follow me on everything. Links in the description, everything like that. Like, subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.